Hi everyone, happy Monday, back here again. I'm gonna try and do this live one more time. Uh, the tech gods are not with me today, but we'll give it a lash. Um, I wanted to talk about the new breast cancer rehab specialist course that is going to be going live this summer. And I wanted to give you guys a heads up on it first. So this is a course that I've been teaching live globally for, for the past decade, essentially. And I think it's really, we're at a point in time where the treatments for breast cancer have been improving so much, particularly over the past decade, that you know, 85 to 99% of women are living five to 10 years after cancer diagnosis. So that means we have to start thinking about cancer more like a chronic disease rather than immediately and solely life-threatening condition. And of course, there are a lot of different facets to breast cancer treatment and each of them carry their own baggage with them and their own short, medium and long-term issues. And I suppose the big thing that a lot of therapists have in their mind when they're working with women who've been through cancer is, you know, is what I'm doing safe? Is it going to spread the cancer? Is it going to cause any ill effects? Or how can I be sure that what I'm going to be doing is helping? So in this course, we will have a look at, you know, the, the, the main aspects, I suppose, of cancer treatment. We look at surgery. You know, what can we do in terms of scar mobility for a mastectomy, for breast, con breast conservation surgery or lumpectomies, for reconstructions? What do the different types of reconstruction mean and what are the implications? Um, what happens to shoulder function, to range of motion, to strength, and what can we do safely to improve that and to improve strength afterwards? If someone's had chemotherapy, what are some of the side effects? What do we need to be aware of? Again, what's safe, what's not safe in terms of a compromised immune system? But, you know, how do we deal with chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, with the balance implications of that, with... Um, cancer related fatigue you know what are some specific strategies that are evidence based that we know can help women with this um, with the cancer related cognitive function what we used to call chemo brain again all these things are going to play into successful outcomes for the women that you're working with and i have evidence based strategies to help you navigate through all this and translate abstract concepts into actual concrete steps that you can incorporate into your practice Radiation is another important aspect of breast cancer treatment and radiation has a number of short and long term effects. So radiation in the short term, it's almost like getting, you know, for, it depends on your skin reactivity. Some women, it will be like having a sunburn, you know, of varying degrees of severity. But the thing to remember with radiation is the effects of radiation keep building and building and building as time goes by. So that with that post-radiation fibrosis, the skin can get quite tight, um, but restriction in terms of mobility and function, movement becomes non-negotiable. If you've had radiation, it has to be part of your lifelong self-care strategy. But what's the right type of movement? Radiation is also going to have an effect on bone density. It's going to affect uh, cardiac health. So those are all issues that we want to be aware of. Hormonal and targeted therapies have their baggage as well. So you want to imagine a really intense menopausal reaction, particularly you know, around drugs like uh, the aromatase inhibitors or tamoxifen. Now it's recommended that women take tamoxifen for about 10 years um, after cancer diagnosis to reduce the risk of recurrence. But most women don't stay on, for, stay on it for the recommended length of time because um, of the joint dysfunction, of the muscle pains. And this is where skilled exercise prescription really comes into its own. And of course, the lymphatic system. We have to talk about the lymphatic system, particularly if you've had surgery, if you've had radiation, both of those can compromise lymphatic function. So what can we do to optimize lymphatic function? What are the risk reduction strategies we need to know about? What can we do from a manual therapy perspective um, in terms of self MLD, in terms of dealing with issues like cording or auxiliary web syndrome? How can we recognize the signs and symptoms that the lymphatic system is becoming stressed? When do we need to refer on? Long term, we're thinking, you know, strength, well being, weight management becomes incredibly important. And stress management really plays into that, doesn't it? Because we know that stress 
can drive belly fat. And belly fat is particularly hormonally active, which is not good if you've got a hormonally driven cancer. So what are some strategies we know will work around that? Um, what happens in terms of bone health? Cardiac health, again, you know, that's one of my favorite things to talk about. But for breast cancer, it actually becomes much more important than, uh, than I would normally even talk about. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's up there at the pinnacle of women's health as far as I'm concerned. But with breast cancer, you have this triple whammy. You're on estrogen deprivation, so you're losing the cardioprotective effects of estrogen. Chemotherapy, particularly chemo protocols like adriamycin, can be super cardiotoxic. Radiation is going to affect cardiovascular health. Um, we know that you know, the cancer-related fatigue can promote some inactivity. The post-radiation fibrosis can lead to stiffness, and trunk stiffness can lead to arterial stiffness. So how can we break that cycle and help women live well? Um, you know, what to eat, what to avoid, what is the evidence telling us, and how can we bring that into practice? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of the theory into online modules. So there'll be recorded uh, voiceover PowerPoint lectures. There'll be live webinars. I'm going to have a private Facebook support group where I'll be in there sharing resources and doing live Q&As. And then at the end of August on the 31st, we're going to have a live day where you can come along. You can practice the manual therapy skills for scars, for a lymphatic uh, function, um, for myo, you know, myofascial dysfunction generally, um, for optimizing recovery from all of these issues. We'll look at exercise prescription. Now, my bias is towards yoga and Pilates, but I'll also be adding in resistance, balance, flexibility, and some restorative uh, strategies to some mindfulness, some yoga nidra exercises. We're going to get PD approval for all of this, but really the goal as far as I'm concerned, because this is a question that keeps coming up again and again and again, is how can I be sure what I'm doing is safe? So what I want to leave you with if you do this course is confidence that what you're doing is safe, is going to be beneficial, and it's going to have a toolbox that you can start using um, on Monday, the day after you come in and see me. Um, it's about the knowledge of what to do and the knowledge about what to avoid, um, combining manual therapy, exercise prescription, education, reassurance, and human connection. Um, to be able to touch somebody with kindness and, and to connect with them that way and to help bring them back into their bodies and to help, you know, help women live well after cancer treatment ends. Um, there will only be 20 people on this intake. Actually, there's only going to be 19 because Jenny has got the first place. She'll be coming along to this live day in August. It's suitable for you if you're a physio, if you're a massage therapist, if you're licensed to touch and prescribe exercises, then this course is going to be suitable for you. Um, I'm going to put a link to the, to the information page below this video. Um, it's not live on the website yet because basically because I wanted to give all of you uh, in Burrell Education Student Support first dibs on this. But there are 19 places left. And what I'll do is after about 10 days, I'll put the sales page live uh, to the rest of the world and set it free. And if you've got any questions, uh, let me know. And I'll do my best to answer them here in, in this thread. Um, and I'll have my email address and all the information that you need. If you're interested in developing skills to help women who've gone through breast cancer live well, you know, to move from just surviving to actually thriving and getting back to a quality of life as well as a quantity of life, then I hope you'll come and join us. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of the day. Bye for now.